Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2018 video. You guys know what I'm doing today. I would have done it yesterday but I didn't get a chance. Okay, so welcome aboard the APTP. We will take the train from Preston as far as Kalai where the scenario and the visibility is poor tonight. And some trains are running late. The train in front, one Papa 63, has been reported as running around 15 late. So we should expect to be held up at some point. When you're ready, open the doors. Let passengers board at Preston. Timings are based on the 1985 BR's working timetable and as are follows. Okay, the only reason I've done the scenarios to come with this is because DTG um, have not released with the manual how to use the CAPT in other scenarios. Um, I know there are people that will squirrel away and work away at that and we'll probably have it in the next couple of days, I reckon. But that's the bad bit out of the way. This is the good bit. I bloody love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I love it. Right, uh, actually I have all my lights looked fine. Uh, got my right hand one on, perfect. Oh, we have instrument lights on. My master key in, stick it into auxiliaries. Bring that down to initial. Um, I will do a full in-depth how to drive this uh, train. Comes from a CAPT. Uh, this is literally just having a look at it, really. And this is, yeah, it is a first look, really. It's a first look at the release version. Um, massively, massively impressed. Well done, DTG. Um, while we are here, let me show you some of the things I can't really show you when we're doing. So you have got the motor alternator and diesel generator stuff that you can sort out on this side. Those of you will have all seen your nose cone stuff. So you get the buffers come out, it twists. Ain't that pretty? And then that closes back down there. Look, we have doors that open in the cab. And they show on the outside as well. So it, it's it's a really nice bit of kit. This here is one of my favourites and probably my only negative in the cab. So you've they've made that panel come down. You've even got little wires there that are really nicely done. But no switches were, which is a bit weird. This is all the CAPT isolation stuff. You get a hot plate up there, that doesn't actually do anything. Uh, God's Call cool Buzzle does work. The horn is fantastic. Oh. Well, that is um, actually what the guy says in the round trip to Glasgow video. Um, which is quite funny. That really is quite funny. It goes a bit like this. See, now to me, they could have got that to work, and they didn't. They got it wrong. <laughs> I've, only just, I've literally just found that. Um, but yeah, they they just got that a bit wrong, haven't they? Which is kind of annoying. But it's only me that's really geeky enough to probably know that. That's off uh, the round trip to Glasgow, which is a British Transport Films uh, video, as far as I'm aware. And it has some of the best cheesy '80s music, which I will play as we depart um, for you all. Yeah. Right. Let's get this show on the road. That's really pretty cheesy. It's nice seeing the back of the cab there, though. I really like the field of view in this cab as, as well. You've got a much wider view. You're not stuck up at the windscreen. It's, it's nice. I think um, some people's FOV with it just, to me, looked a bit too far back, if I'm honest. So let's just get going, shall we? Beautiful. 
and it's amazingly quick. So we've got two power cars. Actually, in this formation, what I've just thought of is I don't think we have a passenger view. No, we don't. So in the longer set, you can have a passenger view. In this set, you don't. I don't know why that is. I would have picked probably like one of the driving trailers to have the passenger view in or something. One that's always going to be in the formation, really. The, the track run sounds aren't the best, I'm going to be honest. Um, considering we know what DVTs sound like, um, you, you, we've got a rough idea of what this should have sounded like. I know we don't have that many recordings of it or anything from the interior that you could really get sounds from. I think we know it wasn't silent. We're pretty safe to say it wasn't silent. And it's... It's a bit weird that it's... Uh, like in the CAPT stuff, they put it up to 155. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure it went up to 155 actually in any sort of terms of service. I think it was 140 um, it could go up to. I know it did do faster because 162.2 or something, 165.2 mile now um, on full test, and 155 was what they wanted it to be. But I don't know if it ever did it really. I would think definitely not in passenger and revenue service. So yeah, I love her. Absolutely love it. The effort that's gone into this is good. Um, as, as I've already said, sounds... Power cars and that ain't bad at all, really, considering we don't really know what we what we should be hearing. There was a really funny thing actually in the manual from DTG, which I was uh, so it's the TRBS vehicle has the passenger view. Um, I found this in the manual, which I thought was quite interesting. Whilst we do our utmost to reproduce sounds that are accurate and true to life, sometimes these sounds may not completely tally with the user's expectation. Due to the nature of the simulation, it is often not possible to reproduce a completely accurate soundscape for a variety of reasons, such as limitations to our current technology and occasional inability to gain meaningful access to locomotives being created. We should therefore regard the audio reproduction for our locomotives. This is brilliant. Are you ready for DTG making their own crap up? And or as an authentic interpretation rather than a perfect recreation. Right. That is a cop-out. That is a massive cop-out. We know that they can be done because Armstrong Powerhouse do it. That, that's, that's lame, DTG. Even though they have got the, the sounds for this did come from Crew Heritage Centre, but I don't think it was DTG that got them. So I've been speaking to a guy who's part of this and he's confirmed that Uvi came round years and years ago and recorded some sounds and took detailed pictures and things like that. But DTG have it themselves. Uh, they do get a, a mention in the manual, which is nice. So, as I said, I'm not going to go through the full thing with you now or how to drive or what to do with it. This is just my thoughts on it more than anything. Um, tilt is beautiful. It's got nine degrees of tilt or something this thing did in real life. And it does it very well. It looks stunning. We've all seen those videos of this thing going around bends and it, it's just so well recreated. The bit that you will notice though in here is that you do get a bit of shuddering. Now, on the West Coast Main Line over Shap, that ain't too bad. You take this bad boy in the West Coast Main Line north, and you're in for a shock because there's no um, super elevation or cant on the track. It's worse. It is worse. 
Interestingly, when I was talking to somebody else about this the other day, it was uh, they wanted to, me to use the big HUD to see the forces. Because this, if you remember, if you did any of the career scenarios in the 390 on the West Coast Mainline North, you'd fail them as soon as they brought in this feature. Because as soon as you go around the corner, you get thrown into the red. Bang. Oh, we're actually speeding, which is good. So after this bend, I'll take that big HUD off because I hate it. I'll just show you the forces. So there we go, the thing hardly moved. It was quite a light bend, I'll do one more bend. Neutral sections are modelled as well, so you'll notice as we go through this neutral section, the line light will go out. Wherever it is. Yes, as you see, it doesn't really move. Which is nice. It's pretty. It's pretty. I've really enjoyed driving it. I've, I've done a couple of little drives with it, and I just find myself doing end to end of routes. Like, seriously, doing end to end. No joke just because it is a nice to drive. Uh, one of the really cool features with it as well is its, it's brakes. So I'm hoping we're going to start getting some yellows when we catch up to this service and I'll be able to brake for you. So the one thing they have included for the CAPT stuff is a template solution, uh, scenario. It's included if you wish to recreate your own APTP scenarios that feature the CAPT system on West Coast Main on Overshack. I would like to have seen it in a, in a manual. I would like to have seen it written down. I'm not a scenario creator, but I know those that are. There you go, right round the bends, it's not doing it. In fact, it's not moving at all. Which is fantastic. So yeah, one thing else you've got here is really nice, is you have the boost notch. So you have to hold it into it. Um, you can stay in boost for 20 seconds before you overheat your traction motors. There's a really good video done by, I think there's some, some students that were... Uh, doing a, they did a series called The Story of Steam on YouTube, I think it was, and they were at crew, and one of the drivers at crew, one of the old boys used to drive the ABTP, and they got us talking through some bits and pieces and stuff. Um, well worth a watch on YouTube, just search Advanced Passenger Train, you'll find it, you'll find it. Anyway, this music makes me this train ten times better. This is now showing you how quick this thing can break. Same we've got wheel slip going on. To 
the CAPT brake has down to an emergency brake? Yeah, I think it has. So, this is actually a good point to give you guys a little bit of a tip. I was going to do this uh, in my other video, but I know that people were struggling with getting it out of an emergency brake application. Uh, what we need to make sure we do is that this isn't pulled down, so we make sure that's pulled back up. Put the train brake handle itself into emergency and pull the throttle off and set the reverser to the auxiliary's position. In theory, we should now, there we go, have the brakes off. We should have traction power again. There we go. Oh, it's a weird bit going on there, though. To be fair, slight glitchy bit. It's incredibly quick off the mark. It's a pleasure to drive. Expect a full-blown fun scenario with this thing. Probably by Tuesday. That's what I'm aiming for. I will be doing some on the stream on Sunday night, uh, along with a new route as well. So a lot of people are out there are saying, what are your thoughts on this, Alan? My thoughts on this are, it is damn good. This is one of the best things we have seen from DTG. I would say go for an awfully long time, if not ever. It's been done with a bit of love. You cannot deny that this hasn't been done with a bit of love. A uh, bit of thought, a bit of depth. Really impressed. Also really quite saddened that they didn't give it the like a bit of fanfare before it came out. I mean, I know a lot of this was um, Skyhook. I mean, if you look who's been involved in this, it doesn't actually say UV itself. You've got uh, Edward Fisk, Skyhook Games, Wagons, the beta testing team, Rob Latham of APTP.com, and the Crew Heritage Centre. So I'm not sure if I think it, if Dove, Dove, Dove Trade just published this or what. Because it's not really originally the UV model, it's been a new one since then, and all this jazz. So it's kind of hard to work out what the crack is with it. But to be honest, I don't care, because I really, really am enjoying it. It drives like an absolute dream. Is this worth your money? Yes, of course it is. Of course it is. Is it going to be on the sale, in the Christmas sale? I doubt it. I truthfully, truthfully do doubt it but um, feel free to, to go and try with that one. But I don't think it will be. But then again, I said that this wouldn't be released the same week as a Train Sim World DLC, and it was. And it really was. So yeah, I don't really know what what the, oh God, it's reversed. I don't really know what the Apple is with that, why DTG have decided to release it alongside the uh, Rapid Transit the same week. It is a bit strange. I for one now cannot wait to drive this out of Euston up to Birmingham, down the Trent Valley, West Coast Mainline North, West Coast Mainline over Shap like we're doing now. I'm going to be doing a lot of this for a long time. This is my first time driving it like near dusky sort of night as well, and again I'm really impressed. The way the illumination is off the CAPT is beautiful. It's got the higher speed again. Let me show you this bad boy on this as well. I don't know what's going on with those headlights, to be honest with you. You see how the train's tilting, but the pantograph's staying stationary. 
That is a very, very, very nice feature. Power cars themselves, the roof detail, detailing and stuff looks decent. Um, I'm not going to complain about that at all, really. I'll tell you what I would have liked to have said. Now, this is just this is not something I'm saying. I'm criticising DTG for it in any way, shape or form. Um, but do you know how Armstrong Powerhouse do the camera view? For the pass <coughs> Sorry, for the passenger view. They do the head out. I'd like a little like camera about here, so you can watch the pantograph tilt as you go around the corner. So that would look very, very cool. Uh, just hovering around these power cars at the minute, they do they do sound a bit quiet. I don't think so much the noise as the train itself makes, but it's. Um, Diddled that again. Um, it's more the track sounds that I would like to see improved. I know we don't know what it sounded like, but we do know what DVT sound like. We know what a wheel on rail sounds like. Um, they could have made one of their, what did they call it? Interpretation, one of their accurate inter rep rep representations or whatever they said. That's what I'd like to them to do, but I know there are those out there that could add in a few sounds from here or there, or those companies that would make sound packs for a living. Um, we'll wait and see. I'm hopefully going to be hands-on with the real APT around January time, so I am going to be able to go sit, have a fiddle and a play um, while picking some bits up. And... Um, I'm going to really enjoy being able to play with it in real life and then come back and drive it myself. Really, really enjoy it. I'm, you, you'll have noticed, guys, there's, I, there's not a lot I can say because I know how good this is. It is lovely. It really is lovely. It's a really, really well-made bit of DLC. Um, there are a few little bits and pieces. Nothing I'm going to be madly picking up on. Top work to whoever made this. So that's my really quick first look video i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much for joining me and please do not forget to like share or su and subscribe if you haven't already uh the more subscriptions uh more subscribers and the more shares these videos get the more income i get the more i can spend on dlc um it helps me it helps you all right, and guys, once again, thanks ever so much, and I will catch you soon.